Henry Josh, we wanted to help show some people some things they can do to prepare to play before they get in the net. Um, sometimes you don't get much warm up. We want to prevent injuries. So one of the key things that we use nowadays is a foam roller. So Josh, can you show us some, some basic foam roller exercises that you do to prepare yourself to play? For sure, yeah, so usually start warming up the legs. So I'll use both legs on this one. And just roll back and forth. Helps get the upper uh, hamstrings loosened up there. So what would exercise number two be then? A little bit more specific, one leg on the outside of the thigh, pulling up to the knee, towards the hip. And in the description below, we're gonna give you some links to a bazillion foam roller exercises that you can do. You got another one you can show us that you, you like as one of your favorites? And the basic premise with foam rolling, it helps activate and warm up the muscles, get you feeling a lot more loose before you get on the ice, uh, getting any residual aches and pains, help mitigate those in the muscles and some of the delayed onset muscle soreness. All right, you got two more to finish with. Yep. Pull it from the lower to the upper back. Nice. And it feels good for sure too. It's almost like giving yourself a, a massage. All right, what would be the last foam roller one that you'd last recommend? One. Oh, nice. Getting the lats loosened up. And obviously, you do those both ways. Great job with foam rolling there, Josh. So, Josh, all great athletes at the NHL level, college, etc., they all do dynamic stretching before they play. It warms up the muscles. It activates the muscles temperature wise and puts you through a full range of motion. And it's different than static stretching, which means just stretching in place, with not a lot of movement. Now this shouldn't be ballistic where there's a crazy amount of bouncing, but by moving when you stretch, you really get yourself ready to play and the core muscle temperature up. So we're gonna start by demonstrating again, four or five common dynamic stretches you can use as a goalie to get ready to play. And in the description below, we'll list a bunch of websites where you can find even more. So what do we got for the first dynamic stretch? First one's gonna be uh, knee pulls or hugs to the chest. Nice. Five. Normally a dynamic stretching program should take 15 to 20 minutes to get yourself ready. All right, why don't you head back there, Josh? So, what do we got for a second variation of a dynamic stretch? We're gonna do high kicks, stretch out the legs. Yeah. Really helps loosen up the hammies, get the hips starting to open up and activate. All right, that's dynamic stretch number two. Number three, what do we got for another dynamic stretch? We're gonna do a lunge with a twist over the front leg. Nice, get the lower body starting to release. Great job. All right, Josh, why don't you show me a fourth one? Here's an example of a fourth version you can do. Uh, open up the hips. Nice, and as we know with goaltenders, hips are a problem and making sure they're properly warmed up and prepared to play is gonna really extend your mileage. Excellent, okay, last one. And what do we got for the fifth one? Fifth one, we're gonna do sweeps, so front leg straight. Hamstring, lower back, glutes, another great dynamic stretch to get yourself ready. I see a lot of NFL players do this. That's dynamic stretching as an example. After you play, it's also important to stretch, and static stretching's been proven to work great to help with delayed onset muscle soreness after an activity. So when you get off the ice, Here's some stretches you can do to help loosen up and prevent some muscle soreness. So what would stretch number one be, Josh? Our first one, we call the butterfly. Put our feet together, bring it in, chest up. You can put some light pressure down on your legs. Nice. All right, what's the second stretch, Josh? We do single leg, touch your toe. No bouncing, gentle stretching 
and helps get some of the soreness and the lactic acid of the muscles after workout. All right, what's the third stretch, Josh? The third one, we're gonna bring the, the knee in, cross our body, we're gonna twist over the front leg. And of course, we end up doing that both sides, but what would the next static stretch be? Next time we're gonna lay down, we're gonna hug the, the leg up into our chest. Again, working with the knees, being pulled up to the chest helps activate the glutes and gets a nice solid stretch in the, the old gluteal muscles. You can also cross the body as well. I can hear my back cracking right now just doing that one. I wish I was that flexible. And you got one more static stretch for us? Yeah. Last one here called Pigeon. This front leg crosses over. Just gonna lean the body right into it. Excellent. So as you can see with these static stretches, we're really targeting the lower body, in particular the hips, the hammies, the glutes, quads, and the calf. Because goaltending, quite frankly, is a lower body position. And we don't want to ignore the upper body, but I prioritize the after activity workout stretching the lower body. So as an elite athlete, one thing we want to do, even in the beer leagues, we want to get our hand-eye coordination going and our foot-eye coordination. Um, whether you use a hacky sack or a soccer ball, here's an example of some wall passing back and forth with your feet to get you light on your feet and to get the foot-eye coordination going and get the heart rate up a little bit, activate the lower body, and get your foot-eye coordination going. So you get to beat it against the wall, catch and kick, back and forth, just keep her going like you're playing ping pong against the table with the top up. Here we go. You can do it low, like just keep it low on the ground. Don't even have to elevate it for the first variation. Just keep it flat on the ice. Just happy feet, happy feet, happy feet. That, keep her going like that, that's it. Nice. Excellent. Another thing we can do, Josh, is you see the teams get around in a semicircle and get five, six guys trying to keep the ball in the air. We're gonna find out how skilled you are as a soccer player. So let's do a little soccer ball hacky sack and see how you, well you keep that thing up in the air bouncing around more talented than you look Josh one more like that don't worry I can edit it to make it look good one more and you can do that against the wall a little bit so let's get it up in the air and start trying to play elevated kicks against the wall a little bit great job Josh awesome so, use of a soccer ball, get your heart rate up a little bit, also get your foot-eye coordination going. Good job. So a lot of people know that I will often go online and chirp juggling and some other hand-eye stuff, only when it applies to people trying to improve the reflexes. This won't improve your reaction time, and this won't improve your, <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> juggling won't improve your reaction time, it won't improve your reflexes. But what it will do is get your hand-eye going before you play. And this is a great way to get yourself sharp before you play. So if you can do it, you can juggle. Starting off, standing up on your feet. Good hand-eye helps concentration, getting the brain focused on the present. It's another good thing to do if you ever get nervous because if you're thinking about juggling, you can't be thinking about the nerves and what the upcoming game is. Now, we can go down into our butterfly and do the same exact thing. Just another position to be in, just another little feature, a drill that you can do to help get your hand-eye going before the game and getting a warm-up. Good job, excellent. And I want you to, in the butterfly against the wall, just get a little bit of a, a juggle going against the wall. wall. Yeah, yeah. You do it with one hand, and we can alternate hands. There's a bunch of variations you can do. It's all about the hand-eye and watching it in. Another great activity. Now, throw me one of those balls. Now, go from your right hand to your left hand and vice versa. Really exaggerate getting over the puck, watching it into your hand. I guess it's a ball, not a puck. Nice clean catches. Head down over the puck, watching it in there. Excellent job. All right. Another great drill we can do is work on wall catching where you throw a lacrosse ball off the wall, catch it off the bounce, and really exaggerate watching it into your trapper hand or your glove hand, and hold it for a split second after you catch it. Now lacrosse balls are awesome because they got a hyper bounce to them, and it's a great way for you to really get warmed up before you play. Go ahead, Josh.
one more. Good job. All right. And obviously, you can work that with both hands. Another good device we've used for years, reaction ball. And what you can have is a coach can drop that ball and you gotta try to quickly catch it off the bounce. And we can do it from the butterfly position too. Nice. Two more. Last one. Great job, Josh. All right, let's get your stuff on and get out there. All right, Chris. Obviously, when we haven't played for a while with the pandemic, and even as an adult goaltender that does play a lot, the warm-ups suck. Guys shooting at your head, three guys shooting at once. And even in minor hockey, it's the same thing. We typically only get three to five minutes to warm up. So today, I wanted to give you a three-minute warm-up that I suggest for all adult goalies to do away from the team, near the wall at the blue line, get some warm-up shots. And this is a three-minute warm-up that we prescribe for all goalies that get very short warm-ups. Here we go. We're gonna go three minutes starting right now. Okay, take a bunch of shots up to glove, easy muffins. Just watch them in, exaggerate the follow, exaggerate catching them in the pocket. A couple more to the glove. Nice, two more. Last one. And then we'll have your shooter reload up the pucks. Now we're gonna do some gut traps to continue on with the warm up. And now we're 28 seconds into it. So let's start up on our feet. And as he brings the puck in at the knee height, let's drive to the butterfly. Let it hit your jersey and gut trap it. So second warm up you can do with the trusted shooter. Just little muffins to the gut, get your body going. Feeling that puck in there, sealing it in tight, covering hunger. Excellent, nice. Two more. Last one. All right, so now we're done with the shooting part of the warm up. You felt some pucks. You're not seeing hard shots at your head. The next part of the warm up is you want to get some movements done. So you're going to come to the top of where the crease ultimately would be. And right now we're one minute into the warm up. So straddle the blue line. You're going to do a sliding butterfly on a diagonal and come back to the middle up on your feet. Push back. Now we'll go the other way. We'll do that a couple each side. Excellent. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to stay down the whole time. So stay down in your butterfly, don't get up. You're going to push to the diagonal, push back, turn your head, look where you're going, and then catch your breath. Excellent. So in these warm-ups, it's also good to take a look down at the ice to see what the opposition's like. If you recognize any of the players, take a quick look at the goaltender to see what he's doing. And then you can finish your warm-up once you've got the heart rate up a little bit with some shots and some crease movements, with some static stretching to make sure your groins and legs are ready to go. And as of right now, we're only two minutes into it. So just on your own, do some static stretching to finish. And the reason I like to move you away from the net, this stops guys from trying hard to score on you. You get a trusted guy that can float stuff up that you can feel the puck. And now when you get into the crease and they start the session, you're gonna feel much better. So there you have it. That's two minutes, 32 seconds, a nice little warm up. Now you're ready to play.